Hi, John. I'm Lauren. Nice oh, to meet you. Man, that pearl necklace is sweet. Did I give you that? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yes, actually. Since WWE transitioned into a PG product in the summer of 2008, any type of profanity or adult innuendos has been virtually absent from WWE programming. But this doesn't mean that WWE and their superstars haven't cleverly and discreetly referenced rude phrases over the past 13 years. Unfortunately, that isn't quite what I had in mind when I heard that I was going to be in a three-way this Sunday. Sir! The use of hidden rude moments was also prominent during the WWE's most risque time period, that being the Attitude Era. A number of moves and phrases that were used during the time period had underlying adult and borderline inappropriate connotations. But there may have been some hidden ones that some are too innocent to realize. But which ones are they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at six hidden rude moments throughout WWE history. to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Seth Rollins, I'm coming for you boy, and I'm coming hard. Number 6 Road Dog's Pump Handle Slam A road dog had an extremely successful WWE career, as between the years of 1994 and 2001, Road Dog would win the tag team titles on multiple occasions. Most of these occasions came with Billy Gunn as the duo would be part of one of the most popular tag teams of the Attitude Era, that being the New Age Outlaws. And most fans associate Road Dogg for his time in the legendary DX stable, a stable which he was a pivotal member of. Now, it wasn't exactly a wrestling machine, but his finisher was interesting to say the least. As Road Dogg's finisher would be a classic pump handle slam, however, this was the Attitude Era and Road Dogg was a member of DX. A simple pump handle slam may have been too much to ask for. Well, you know the outlaws always gotta do it, doggy style! When executing the move, the road dog would add a few pumps to the opponent. Okay, that fucking return! <laughs> Number 5. FTR The Revival's WWE run was a mixed bag. The duo found great success on NXT and they would win the NXT Tag Team titles on a number of occasions and had some of the best matches in the brand's established history. However, in 2017, the duo would be called up to the main roster and things never really clicked for them. And one of the reasons for this is that on the main roster, tag team wrestling isn't taken that seriously. The Revival would admit this in a later interview, citing that Braun Strowman and a 10-year-old child winning the Raw Tag Team titles at WrestleMania 34 was all the evidence you needed. The Revival during their time in WWE received a lot of attention from non-WWE tag teams, and one of those tag teams was the Young Bucks. Sir, do you have any Revival t-shirts? Revival? Um, no famous. No famous. The Young Bucks would randomly mention the duo on being the elite and would use the phrase FTR which meant F the Revival. The phrase FTR took off and the Revival actually began using it on their ring gear as well as official WWE licensed material. Now it's obvious that WWE upper management, in particular Vince McMahon, had no clue whatsoever what the slogan actually meant. And according to the Revival during their WWE promos, it meant uh, forever the Revival. But of course, we all knew what it really meant. F-T-R-R. -R. Get it? Yeah. Number 4. Charlie Caruso DP A Charlie Caruso's last WWE appearance was certainly one to remember, as during an interview with the former NXT North American Champion Damian Priest, Caruso would awkwardly reveal that she loves DP. Now for those who are unaware with DP, well, it kind of means, uh, well, you know, two in one, and certainly not remotely appropriate for a PG product. In the segment, Raw Talk co-host R-Truth would use DP to refer to Priest, and Charlie responded by saying, DP, yeah, I like that. DP, it has a nice ring to it. DP. It was downright awkward as Truth attempted not to laugh and tried to move on from the situation by stating, There's a nice ring to it, DP. Oh, it's easy. She get confused sometimes. Dog. No, 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 forget, it's not me. You know it's not me. She remember everything, but she forgets sometimes. I got you, I got you. Number 3, Sunny Days. One of the most heated feuds in WWE history was the feud between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. The two had incredible chemistry in the ring, but behind the scenes, the two legendary superstars loathed each other. A one specific promo from HBK in 97 made tensions between the two men escalate even further when HBK informed Bret that, Even though lately you've had some 
Sunny days, my friend. You still can't get the job done. Now this was a reference to the rumour that Brett, despite being a happily married man, had an affair with WWE diva Sonny. This quite rightly made Brett absolutely furious and the two would get into a fight backstage a few weeks after the incident. According to Jim Ross, who was head of talent relations at the time, he stated that the Sunny Days comment had zero place in a wrestling promo. JR would add, Here's the deal, number one in my opinion, that should not have been included in the promo. Secondly, the topic was too personal, too close to home, and then the main overriding issue is that the talent are going to say, I was just trying to make it real, I just wanted it to be reality based. Well okay, your point can be made, and say yes, you're right about that, it's still not the right thing to do. Number 2, Rated R. Now the feud between the Usos and the New Day was one of the highlights on WWE programming in 2017. The two made tag team wrestling in WWE feel special and the two teams would have some of the best tag matches of all time. But one of the most talked about moments of their feud was a rap battle segment on an episode of Smackdown. In the battle, the Usos would drop the line of... Now this line was a direct reference to the adult videotape that Xavier Woods was featured in alongside Paige a few years prior. Not to mention Brad Maddox, but he wasn't there. The line, Becky Lynch, see you next Tuesday. A Talking Smack when it launched in 2016 was a popular show with fans and superstars alike. The show featured superstars cutting unscripted natural promos and 99% of the time they were better than the promos that WWE offered us on Raw and Smackdown on a weekly basis. Thank you for talking smack. This is the best That's wrestling guy. show on television. That's best our guy. TNX. That's week. our guy. Thank you so much. A Talking Smack would feature some absolutely incredible moments including The Miz confronting Daniel Bryan and the Usos really coming into their own as characters. However, two specific moments involving Becky Lynch have somewhat slipped under the radar with fans. Both moments involve Becky sneakily calling Alexa Bliss the C-word. The first instance of this occurred during a promo confrontation between Bliss and Becky on the show. Bliss would inform Becky that she wasn't going to take a title and Becky would respond by saying See you next Tuesday which is a euphemism for the C word. The second occasion occurred when Becky was once again cutting a promo about Bliss. In the promo, Becky would say, Alexa, you're a two-time champion, but you're also another C word. You're a cheater. A talking smack host Daniel Bryan and Renee Young were all shocked by Becky's promo, and Bryan even admitted that he thought Becky was going to say a different C word. Whoa, oh, girl! I was not expecting okay. cheaters. Okay! <laughs> I was Me expecting neither. something else. But well, there you have it folks, 6 hidden rude moments in WWE. Are there any more that we should add to the list? Let us know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.